If you find yourself looking all over your company's workspace or even your own individual workspace to find all the different databases that you're looking for to do your work, then I have a great solution for you and it's called a personal OS. This is using my perspectives method to consolidate all of your information and data into one spot that feels like you've created your own application within Notion. And I think you're gonna love it. So check out this video, leave a like if you do like it and let me know what you think in the comments and let's get into it. This is what I call the personal OS. We're currently looking at my terminal, which is kind of my personal HQ, and this does belong in a workspace with uh, other people. So this is a, a company workspace, but my own personal terminal, which is kind of my HQ dashboard. And so the personal OS that we're talking about is kind of a mini application that I have in my system, and I have a link to it directly from my HQ, just like I have links to other kind of mini applications. We can just jump straight into the personal OS. And before I get into this, let me show you how this works on the back end and show you how you can get started yourself. And I also have a template for you that you can download so that you can kind of skip the line. If you follow the breadcrumbs at the top, you'll see that this actually is a, a page in a database and I call those packs and I have actually a folder for all the different packs. So all of those pages you saw on the terminal, or I should say all of these links that you saw on the terminal. These are all pages uh, just like the personal OS and I call them packs. They live in this packs folder. And so I have this packs or pack personal OS. That's where it lives. Now, uh, if you want to get started on your own, download the template. I'll have the link in the description. You can get started without having to build it from scratch. But if you're interested in how to build it from scratch and how it works, I have previous videos on building this. And this I call the perspectives method. This is using databases, not only to house data, but as ways of uh, viewing your data. And so uh, definitely go check those out. Now that I have this one, and if you have the template downloaded already, uh, we can take this template and then duplicate it with the content and what we end up with is the start of our personal OS and we can start adding more perspectives and bringing in different databases to populate it. And the way you set that up is you open this up and we would change this to personal OS and I would copy the link to this page. I pressed command L and then we go to terminal and paste it. Again, go back to those previous videos. I'm already explaining it probably too much, but that's how we got to this spot right here with the personal OS. And then you can see that I've filled out some of those perspectives already. The reason why the personal OS is so useful, especially in a company context, is because you might be jumping all around your workspace to find the different databases or dashboards that you're looking for to get your work done. So if you're looking for projects, you might end up going to a projects database or you might go to a different section of a dashboard for your team and you're spending a lot of time navigating when really the data should just live in one place. It should be what we call global data where multiple people have access to that same database. And let me show you the projects database that we have that I do pull from in this uh, example. So we have a core data folder and then if I go to projects, I've got it hidden because I don't want to show all of our projects, but this is our projects database. And so the way you, you do this is you come to this database and when you're here, you can't really add a bunch of different tabs for a bunch of different views on this one because you're, you're going to be affecting what other people see. You're gonna overload this page with a bunch of tabs. That's not really what these core databases are meant for. They house the data, but we have the ability to create as many different linked views as we want. And these linked views, you can customize the way they look as much as you want and it doesn't affect the data underneath. And so that's what we're taking advantage of. And so you come to these databases, so you know, think about one that you normally go to a lot that you want to import into your personal OS and you just find one of these and you can copy these links right here um, or you could just copy the link straight to the database right here at the very top command L and then we will go right back to the personal OS and I've copied that projects link and so I've created a, a perspective called my projects because I want to see my projects and then I can command V and create a linked view of the database and it's pulling in that, that view. And then I can modify it as I wish and by filtering and sorting and changing the layout. Maybe I want a Kanban instead of a list. You can do all of those things without bothering anybody else. Now, 
just to make sure if you do add or delete properties, you are adding or deleting properties for everybody else. So you wanna be very cautious not to do those things unless you actually know what you're doing. In fact, we actually recommend at Notion State that most people don't have access to do that on a database and you should only let people have the access level can edit content and not can edit or full access because that lets other people add or delete those properties. I won't get into that now, but just so you know, you have infinite flexibility to change the filter, the sort, the layout, the grouping, and all of those things, but uh, actually adding or deleting properties does affect everybody else and of course adding or deleting pages within the database and their properties that they do have like their status of course changes for everybody else because you are changing that one item in the database we are looking at the personal os and what we have is this landing page i might actually call it josh os and 500 other people in my company might also have their own OSs and that's totally fine. And you can uh, call it by their name or come up with some naming convention. And what's really cool is that this also can kind of act as like an internal calling card. So other people in my company can come to this personal OS and see things about me. So I love my cat, I love my wife more, I'm a Notion certified consultant. You know, I could fill this out with all sorts of cool things. You can create your own culture, but this is just a, an example of what that landing page might look like. These are things about me. And then we can dive further into my projects. And this is from that projects database. Of course, I'm, I'm being a little silly with the Lord of the Rings references, but it is from that database and I have it filtered to only show things for me. And I've got this even dummy property called radar just to show you an example of what this looks like. So again, I, I have the, the full flexibility to change the way this looks as much as I want. I can come in and change the layout from list to board or table. I can change all the properties that I'm showing or not showing. Um, I can group it, I can sort it. It doesn't affect anybody else. A very common example is projects. And then another one that's related would be tasks. So we've got my tasks and you can see the ones again where I am the one that's on the radar. In your case, probably you have an assigned property or with the projects, maybe it's project owner or project team member or you know, just informed and maybe, maybe you use a racy matrix for your projects. Uh, you can do all of that. And in fact, you can add more tabs if you would like. So this is on radar. Maybe this is like project owner. So I only want to filter it to show me the projects where I'm the owner. And then I could duplicate this one and then change the filter to only show me the projects where I just need to be uh, made aware of this project. I'm on the team, but I'm actually not the owner. And that might be different than the projects that I own. So going down this list, we're just collecting some of those common data objects that you might be looking around your workspace for. So projects, tasks, files, you know, I've got different files, of course, just dummy data, but I can fill this out with my files and uh, my meetings. You know, this is just a list. So maybe this is um, a discovery call. Let's say the date is today. This is a list and I can change this from a list to a calendar and then I can see it here. So I can do the same thing by deleting this and then giving myself that list again. And now I have both options. So we have something called Sparks. And so usually these originate in a meeting. So a lot of times when you're having meetings, you have a lot of cool ideas and those don't really get written down or if they do, they get written down in the meeting, but then they kind of get lost. And so we developed this thing called Sparks where you can create a spark from the meeting and that spark lives in a different database and this is a great way for you to be able to see all the sparks you created and see the meetings that they came from. My pets, this, I'm not gonna re-record to get rid of this, but I, I recorded this video uh, about an hour ago and forgot to screen record and this was one of the examples. The whole point was that to show that you can add any sort of perspective that you want. So if you have a database of pets, maybe you have 10 cats and you need to keep track of when they get fed or things like that, um, you could pull that in here. I, trying to showcase that while you can pull in those things like projects and tasks and files, those global items that your company does have, you can pull in your own data as well. A better example of that is actually the My Secret Notes. 
and you might be wondering how this is any different. Well, this database actually lives in a spot that no one else actually has access to and therefore they cannot see it. It lives in this private section of my sidebar. And so I am looking at this so I can see this, this database, but nobody else can see this. And so to them, it's gonna look like this. So if they do come to your personal OS and they see this My Secret Notes page, they won't be able to see that data, but you will be able to see this. And so you can kind of write your, your secret notes. Uh, maybe be more in, inconspicuous about it, but maybe not. Maybe just put it out there that you are keeping secret notes and nobody else can see them. Now, just to make sure, it does need to live in the private section. So this is a database, secret notes, that lives in the private section. And I've taken a linked view of it and put it in my personal OS. If this database is in a team space or somewhere else where other people have access, or if you actually created the database in this page and it lives here, you're giving everybody access to this page, which is uh, probably not what you wanna do. So make sure you're aware of how permissions work so that you don't um, let everybody read your secret notes. So the way this, this works is that you've just got this permanent navigation bar on the, the right side and you can just kind of cycle through them. What's cool is that even if you have a company of 500 people and they're all using a personal OS, the structure is the same, it's familiar. You're not having to try and figure out how somebody set up their dashboard, but you know exactly what you're gonna find uh, when you go to somebody's OS and uh, you'll be able to very quickly and intuitively understand what it is you're looking at um, because it's in the context of them. So you're gonna see stuff that is related to that person. For the sake of data security as well, I can delete this entire pack, this entire personal OS, and nothing will happen to my data because none of the data actually lives in this personal OS. That's a problem that a lot of people have is that they, they create their data in their dashboards and in nested pages and they don't actually know where their data lives and you delete a page because not a whole lot of information is on it and you don't realize that there was actually data buried you know, under a couple sub pages. And so by following a, a good rule of thumb, by keeping your data somewhere else, in this case, our company data is its own team space. And then I have my secret notes over here in my private team space. Well, realistically, I would actually house it over here in my terminal. I'm not gonna delete my terminal, and so this is where I, I house these things. But this personal OS, this Josh OS, is just a view. There is no actual data here, you know, except for maybe this about me. You know, I might, I might lose that. But realistically, nothing uh, worthwhile is going to be gone or be missed if uh, if I delete this. So again, we're we're doing a very subtle but important concept, which is separating your data from your dashboards. We've got data in one place, and then we've got this really structured and familiar dashboard in another, and we use linked databases to pull in information in a way that is useful to us and relevant to us by using those filters and sorts. And we're also able to kind of combine our, our private information um, and work that in as well if, if that's something that's interesting to you. There's a lot of different perspectives that you can even add. Of course, uh, using the perspectives method, if you are familiar, it's very easy to add a new one. I just created a new one by pressing the new button. And uh, this is where the My Pets one came from, but I can just create one uh, from scratch and, and start filling it out. So off the top of my head, maybe it's uh, My Cars. This is terrible. I don't have any good ideas off the top of my head. And now I have this kind of blank slate. The navigation is already loaded. Um, and all I have to do is pull in the data here and um, filter it and sort it and, and I'm good to go. Maybe you do something where it's like, you know, my um, wall of love. And maybe you build a company culture of leaving little little sticky notes on, on people's pages. So maybe you come to somebody's personal OS and you say something nice to them. You, you know, you say, you killed that last meeting. You can do whatever you want with this. There's a lot of cool creative ideas and if you have any cool ones, I'd love to hear about them. Definitely leave a, a comment uh, what you think about this and how you might use it yourself. Hope that this is useful for you and that you enjoy it and use it. And um, let me know what you think.
That was the personal OS in Notion. I hope you liked it. If you did, I would appreciate it if you'd press the like button. And if you wanna see more of these videos coming your way, definitely subscribe. We are kicking them out this year and uh, there's gonna be plenty more. So we'd love to have you along for the ride there. You can find me over on Twitter at the Josh Red, and would love to uh, see any screenshots you have of your own systems and how you're using your own personal OS. And I would also love to know what kind of videos you want to see from me. What is it that you want to learn about? Maybe it's something you saw in my videos or a question that you have. I would love to make videos that uh, are actually about things that you want to know about. So definitely feel free to leave comments and I will read every single one of them and probably reply to every single one of them. So thank you so much for your support and until the next video, Video, that's it. I guess I guess I'll see you in the next video. Until then, see ya. Peace. I don't know how to end the video. Bye. <laughs>